chapter 18. Let's go ahead and read the whole chapter. It says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, that three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray you from your servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you your hearts. After that you shall pass on, for therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes on the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I also have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. And the man rose up <clears throat> from there and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of, of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their, their faces from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city, Will you also destroy and not spare the space, the place for the fifty righteous that are there? That be far from you to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty. Will you destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, I will, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. And he said unto him, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be thirty, so there shall Thirty be found there, and he said, I will not do it if I find thirty. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not des destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. <coughs> Interesting chapter, especially when you get down to uh, Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, let's go back to the beginning. What uh, what just took place in the life of Abraham 
before this chapter? Who remembers? Oh. Um. Ishmael was born. And Ishmael was born. They were circumcised. They were all circumcised. What is that? Uh, a picture of what is that a type of? What is that? The spiritual application. Cutting away the. No, the, flesh. the flesh. Getting rid of the flesh. Saving the spirit. Right. Uh, getting getting rid of the flesh. Defeating the flesh. Cutting away the flesh. So, as we follow. Abraham through through Genesis, his relationship with the Lord just continues to get deeper and sweeter and and better. I mean, we we come from, you know, God tells Abraham at the beginning, He says, "Leave your family, your country, you know, leave leave everything." And right from the, you know right out the gates, what's He do? <laughs> he takes a lot with Him, uh, and and He so He comes out, and then there's this famine, and, and what's He do? Goes in Runs the world. deep. I mean, it's just you know he he's he's just not quite there yet. And then God makes this promise with him, saying, "Hey, you're gonna have this seed." And 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 he waits and he waits. And and then Sarah, Sarai comes along and says, "Hey, you know, let's help God out. Let's let's bring in Hagar, and you can have seed through her." So he he listens to that. I mean, just failure after failure after failure. Uh, but at the same time. He's growing. We're going to fail. Mm. We're going to mess up. But for every step backwards that we take, we should take two or three steps forward. We shouldn't step forward and step back. Step forward. We should take two or three steps forward. Yeah, you're going to fall, but then you take two. It's a continual growth. And that's what we see with Abraham. And we get here to chapter 18, and the thing that really stuck out to me in this chapter, uh, and, and if, if you've got one of those Bibles that kind of titles each chapter, uh, mine says, Abraham, the friend of God. I don't know if your Bible has that title to that chapter or not. But when you get to chapter 18, and, and Abraham's called the friend of God several places in the Scripture. When you get to chapter 18, Abraham's God's friend. They, they're so, I mean, they're sitting there, God's discussing with Abraham his plans. Now, uh, that's pretty incredible. I mean, the God of the universe is discussing with a human being, mm. hey, this is what I'm going to do. And giving Abraham opportunity to be part of the discussion. The, the Lord of the entire universe, the God of the universe is friends with Abraham. And, uh, and and that should be the goal, I mean, that should be the goal of each and every one of us, to be, to be that close to God. Um, you know, I, I think of, you know, a parent-child relationship, you know, when I was coming along, you know, my dad was my authority, he was, you know, my dad, and, and he told me what was going to take place. You know, and if I didn't get in line with it, I got, you know, the the rod. Mm. But now that I'm I'm a grown man, and you know, my dad and I have more of a friendship now than it is, you know, that he's my. I mean, I still respect him and love him, and and but but we're close, like friends, than it more than it was when I was, you know, 10, 12, 15 years old. Um, my dad and I discuss things. We talk. He, he actually gets my opinions and my advice, and vice versa. And that's what I kind of see with Abraham. Not that God needs Abraham's opinion or advice, but that's how close they've got. I want to point out a few things. Look at uh, it says verse one. The Lord appeared to him in the plains of Mamre. It said that he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Uh, some believe that maybe the Lord appeared to him, just like remember when. Adam, uh, uh, God came down in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. You know, it was kind of a regular, we, we assume that that might have been a regular thing, that God came down at that point in time in the day, and that's why Adam and Eve hid themselves, you know, because they had sinned. Well, a Abraham's in the tent door in the heat of the day. Some believe that maybe this was a time that him and God fellowshiped on a regular basis. He's standing in the tent door 
waiting for God 